How's everybody doing? Thanks for having us also. This is great. And thanks to Siege Games for making for making Korea. It is a great time. I'll find Karma here somewhere, hopefully. I just tried calling him. I don't know if that worked. Um, Wait, but I hey, there he is. What up, Karma? Hey. I have to update the game information, so that's late coming here. But um, I'm going to be tossing in the game dev. His name is Jason. And cool. Yep. That's who I've talked to a, couple, a little bit by email. Karma, are you stuck in a cave? I got, I got, well, oh, no, yeah, I'm definitely in a cave. Hello? <laughs> Jason, hello. Hey. How's it going? It's going great. Thanks for having me. Welcome to the Super Show. Yeah. Super psyched to be part of this. Thank you, Alex, and everyone else for putting it together. So, so far I've got that little hut you saw up there. I built all of that. I've crafted some of the, I guess, over 200 items, Jason. Nice. You I've, I've some, not, not all of 200. I've crafted some of. Right now I'm looking for Karma. He's stuck in a cave somewhere. So you're actually doing multiplayer, huh? Yep, nice. absolutely. Absolutely. Didn't want to didn't short you on that feature. We are hosting a game. I don't know if you actually want to join our world. You're more than welcome to, of course. Uh, or join your world. Perhaps. <laughs> I think it's join your world. Uh, Jason, can you pop your volume up any higher by any chance? Um, uh, I can try. It's Am possible. I really quiet? Yeah. I know um, that Skype is great at messing up mics, especially one of you stream with them. Yeah. Um, it's possible that maybe Juju can boost the volume on his side as well. Um, it sounds like both of us are quiet. Oh, okay. Give me just I'm a moment. Just watching chat, I have no idea. Sure I don't thing. Hear anything. <laughs> so. Yeah, sometimes with Skype it does that. Also, um, with OBS, if you turn down the game volume with that, you mm. have a bad time because it turns down all of our volume. But, so oh. my mic is at maximum. We have maximum Jason right now. <laughs> maximum value. Um, and uh, I'll see if I can change it anywhere else. Um, it looks, yeah, it looks as high as it can go. See what I can do to fix here. Uh, Karma, can you talk for a few seconds so we can find out if you're also quiet? Certainly. Hello, hello. Because, yeah, if it's just you, Scott, then you can also just turn your own volume down through the stream. Right, right, that would work absolutely. Everybody else can just pump it. Until the next game, whenever it's working normally and then they get blasted. <laughs> Is this better? As far as overall balance goes? Testing, testing. One, two, three. Uno, dos, tres. Pizza Hopefully and we got this working now. <laughs> Jason volume, sadly, does not go up to 11. So <laughs> <laughs> does it skip 11 and go right to 12? Oh, so, um, uh, yeah, I'm going to go rescue Karma real quick, and then we'll take a journey over. Now, I, I found out some cool things about this game I didn't know when I was first testing it, um, uh -huh. that these monsters actually get tougher if I leave them alone. They get, they get a little they, bit they, stronger? They, yeah, there's a whole, like, conflict uh, system in place that's kind of working in the background where monsters will grow stronger, and they'll, like, kind of start taking over regions of the world, and then they'll be, like even stronger versions of the monsters that kind of like um you know make home in these regions and um you have to fend them back to uh oh there he is um to actually like uh lower the hostility in the region and then um normal monsters will start like appearing and whatnot i mean sorry normal like uh not monsters um uh, animals like this beat and birds. Oh, okay. Once you're in safety, uh, Juju, it is still looking like 
your volume is way higher than everyone else's. You may want to just go, I mean, like, it sounds like you should just go into OBS or whatever you're using in like 50% your mic. I am at 12% now. <laughs> <laughs> There's just too much juju. So the co-op to Korea, that's that's like a new thing to it, right? That's what you're working kind on. Kind of. It's new in that it's now finally more working than before. <laughs> <laughs> what are, is there a max amount of players that can be in one world at a time? Uh, like, we haven't tested the upper limits, but technically like 30 40 probably wow um it yeah it probably depends on the server and like um how beefy of the computer it is hmm. uh so we're gonna try to get out of here and start working our way back to our hut i have to build our way back out karma do you have ledge grab yet uh no okay you gotta get on top of that ledge grab is so useful that's it's the most important one. Hopefully that 12 percenting fixed audio. It sounds like everything's good. Okay, good. And if it's nice. not, please let me know. I will be happy to fix. You ruined everything! I broke so much stuff today. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> So I know a fair deal already about the creator of Korea, so I can ask some good you questions. You do. Excellent. Do. Oh, I can ask some good questions, so everybody else. Can I had know a I had bit some about. starter questions, but this seems more interesting. Okay. Well, I, I, I'll I'll give you a, one juicy one, and then and then you can. <laughs> I'm curious about this too. So I know that the development for Korea has been primarily done on stream you live stream as you develop Kriya on twitch right that's right so my question the searing question is do you wear pants while you stream <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm sure you would like to know that wouldn't you <laughs> <laughs> just seems like a good opening <clears throat> question <laughs> um it depends on uh, which day of the week it is actually i have no pants thursday nice uh, today's friday so i do have pants on Good to have at least one one day of the week set aside for no pants. Yeah, it's just, you know, let it all go. <laughs> have a, a good right. fun day. <laughs> just about over there now. We've rescued okay, Karma. Oh. We have not rescued Karma fully. Oh, these guys hurt. You left me? <laughs> yeah. I've died. We've left those guys along, alive for too long, but we do respawn right here. So you respawn right where, right where the crystal is. I'll get over here and start showing off some of the stuff I've made. Karma will be okay if he rises at the crystal. Or fights that boss. We are almost we are almost at Fort Tragic Vision here. Sorry for the lull. Um, tons. I, well, I've, so far I've seen the slimes. I've seen uh, there's a monster further to the right that has destroyed me every time I fought him. And. Yes. It, it's a boar looking creature. I, I have destroyed the boar. I actually oh, yeah. um, oh, okay. I, I killed that the boar by building a platform uh, to stand on and shot fireballs at him. <laughs> As he charged underneath you or something? Yep, yep. <laughs> Alright, okay. here we are. I'll keep those slimes outside just so we can show off some of the, the crafting here. And a nice bed we made from some of the vines hanging. Our workstation. Our tanning bed, a forge, and our research desk, which is the first thing you get to build. And that uh, allows you to like just start researching all of the different, uh, all of the different things you can craft. This game has a ton. Of, uh, I saw on the website you said over 200, and I have barely scratched that surface. Yeah, it's actually probably more like 500. Jeez, <laughs> and it's intense. I haven't even seen the resources yet for probably half of the things. Or even an eighth of the things in this game. Yeah, after four years of development, you kind of end up with a lot of items, a lot of content. Yeah, that's actually a really good question. It's like, how much content is there in the game? Um, are there like different biomes, or is there like? Yeah, there's 
Uh, there's a lot. Um, there's probably like seven or eight different biomes on the surface. I forget exactly how many. And then we have several biomes um, underground. And then we have entirely different realms that the player can explore where you can fight bosses. Um, and there's like procedurally generated dungeons. And then, as I mentioned, there's also like hundreds of items to craft. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there's players on Steam who have uh, like hundreds of hours on Korea. While I think they've probably experienced the content multiple times over, um, there's enough there that you can at least have like probably 40 hours of gameplay to like experience everything. Oh, you know what's wrong here is I don't have my heels on my bar or anything. I uh, think I've hit tab. Yeah, that's what I did. So you do have two uh, weapon slots available to you, uh, your left and right click, and then you can switch back and forth between the, you know, I've got a melee setup and a, a wand and probably going to put a shield there. I guess it looks like I can have a sword also. Yeah, yeah, shields and wands, bows, all of those are yep. interchangeable. In your, oh, sweet. Weapons. So you can put anything in any spot, really? Yeah, you can dual wield shields if you want. I, saw, I did that accidentally for a little while. I had two of the bone shields and I was walking around. I looked like a walking picket fence. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, the talent tree. Um, have, have you seen people like doing a little bit of min-maxing on it? Because there are... Yeah, do, definitely. Do you There's... end up really just having enough points to really fill out the entire tree? or? You do eventually. Um... But people do kind of, you know, focus on certain skills. And we kind of wanted people to do that. Like, we make it so it's really cheap to learn the, um, the first level of all the skills. And then after that, it starts kind of um, going up greatly in cost. Um, okay. So you can kind of, like, play around with things, figure out what you like, and then focus on that. Be interesting to see a multiplayer game where someone just worked on crafting almost the entire time. And somebody was a gatherer, and they just had... You know, the, the top level of all those abilities worked out already. Yeah, I hope that that does eventually become the case where players can mm -hmm. play the game how they want and not really, like, to some degree, especially when you're playing by yourself or just playing with, like, one other person, you kind of have to, like, do uh, combat. And you kind of mm -hmm. need to do uh, crafting, but if you had, like, a group of, like, five people or something, yeah, one person see. could just focus on crafting. See if we can't take out these slimes here, guys. Going after them. I think Karma died to these slimes. I'm a little low on stamina. I'm coming. Hit him with a fireball. Probably not the best use of my stamina. I probably could have used a heal instead. There we go. Hey, welcome to the party. That's weird. Did you lose? Oh, I think maybe, Karma, you had switched items over to the other pool. Ooh, a realm crystal. I've not seen that before. So who did the music for this game? That's actually something that I think I like the most about it. Uh, Clark Powell. Clark Powell. Uh, he he did music for um, and now I'm forgetting what it's called. Um, he's done some other music um, for it's like one other game. Uh, he's actually working on a, a game. Um, I have to look it up here in a moment. Um. But yeah, I, I'll post the link in the um, chat so people can check out um, the soundtrack and any of the other music that Clark has done. So I'll show you those guys we were, we were talking about over here to the right. They, they've kind of taken it to me every time. This is new karma. I, b I built this the other night I was in. I just made a little mud house there so we could add some content if we wanted to. But by the way, these. Yeah, they're level 7 now. I've left them alone, so they've gotten quite a bit more powerful than when I first fought them. Ah, uh, the Quirden. Yeah. They, yeah. they are mean. Yeah, you do not want to do melee with, against them. Oh, okay. Because they'll just zap you. <laughs> Destroy you. Good to know. Yeah, uh, These are things I wish I knew. <laughs> uh, do the uh, wands grow more powerful? Obviously, yeah, kind of like the bone sword, the wands. So as you, as you, oh, there are yeah, there's um, more like higher level wands. You can also use other 
Um, like, you could use your magic, and your magic is much more powerful when you do have a wand equipped. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. To set out on this plant. And the sheep, apparently. Oop, here, co here come the quandron. I'm working on the escape route, don't worry. <laughs> you guys are in the little hole there now. Backed up against the wall. Oh, we got the we got one of them in our domain here. Oh, he hit me anyway. Someone asked, uh, when will uh, Kriya be done with early access? We're hoping to release Kriya out of early access um, like mid-April. So right now I'm eyeing April 19th like the unofficial release date from an official source <laughs> because I'm an indie dev and indie devs never know when their game is actually coming out I can confirm this <laughs> yeah and I've not, I've not seen a Zadis before but it looks like he can't jump too much oh he can yep he's up here now oh, we'll get into that in a second I'll bring up the skill trees here in a second because I want to show yeah, off all the, the different game is skills almost and done. We've been working on a lot of the 1.0 updates. So with that, we're adding in Steam achievements, uh, like the final boss, um, and a lot of uh, story elements to the game as well. Like we've been working on this uh, mythos for the entire world, um, and while we've added that to the environment to some degree, um, we are adding in this. Uh, story to um, the game through this thing that we're calling a lore book where you can find pages scattered throughout the world and uh, each page will kind of tell you um, the story behind the world and um, a few awesome. different perspectives um, and so you'll kind of yeah just learn what's going on and um, oh that's awesome yeah I, I think it will be a, a great way to let players discover about the world um, in their own time and not like kind of force a story upon them. Hmm. Is there anything about the lore that you want to share? Because it's very obvious that this is some otherworldly place. And I'm, I'm curious personally. Um, I haven't really like, I've been very secretive with the lore because mm. I want People, well, for a long time, I didn't know exactly how we were going to uh, divulge all the information. Mm -hmm. And so I was just like careful with not saying anything. Um, I will say it's pretty awesome. Uh, Aaron, uh, who has uh, helped out with the game quite a bit, is the designer on it. And he has spent, actually, it's like six years now that we were working on the lore before we started the actual game. Um, so it's like six years of coming up with these awesome uh, ideas for the game. And there's a lot of like interesting ideas behind like the the gods of the world and how the world was created. Interesting. Um, and I'm super, super excited to finally be sharing that with people. Yeah, I was curious when I first like came in, I was like, oh, okay, I came through a crystal. Where did I come from? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. How many? All of this will be revealed. <laughs> how many people uh, are working on it total at Siege Games? Uh, so for a long time, it was just myself full time, um, and then as we get got further into development, we added more people, and now we're up to uh, five people. Um, still not a very there's... large team for for the amount of content that's that's sitting here. Yeah, and there's actually only uh, like two and a half people are working full time or so, um, and the rest are just working part time. How can you have half a person working full time? Hey Karma, why don't you take this wand, seeing as you're using a lot more magic? <laughs> because sometimes he works full time and sometimes he doesn't. <laughs> okay, I'll let that slide. Oh, I All didn't right. drop it. No, I didn't drop it. Oh, interesting. Um, Sick or kick, I don't know how you want to pronounce it, but he's asking how you convey or compare the quality of the survival manic uh, mechanics of, of this game compared to other similar games. He says he's getting the vibe that there's more RPG-like elements in this. Yeah, a lot of character stats that, uh, that I mean, just as you can see here, there's the widespread of different stats in there, a lot more RPG aspects to it. Um, 
and I'd say that the crafting takes a larger role in the survival in this so far. Uh, before I got the bone sword, I mean, with the wooden club, I was doing very, very little damage. So I'd say a little bit more weight on the crafting to the survival than I've seen in a lot of similar titles. Interesting, like from like the, like what you're getting like right at the very beginning. Yeah, um, yeah. Is that, is that the intention, Jason? Is that your motivation for the development? Yeah, uh, definitely. Like, uh, well, the the initial idea was making a, a sandbox game with lots of mod support, but I played tons of JRPGs while I was growing up, and so I infused the the game design with lots of um, RPG elements, and that's a that's one of the like a common complaint with sandbox games is that they're kind of directionless and you kind of just wander around and do whatever you want. Um, and you, the player has to create their own goals. Um, and some people just, you know, they they want to, like, have those, like, goals be given to them. And the RPG mechanics definitely, like, um, provide them with goals. Like, you know, oh, here's this talent system. You can go learn all these different uh, skills. Or here's leveling, and you can level up. and. Yeah, that's been really the, my main drive was to, I, you know, I, I want a better weapon so I can take down these guys over here. <laughs> now that I know magic does a little bit more damage to them without taking so much damage. Quality of life has improved a little bit. But that's definitely been my driving force to this game has been the RPG elements. Wanting to get, like, double jump is... I love double jump. <laughs> nice. Yeah, and there's progression and like, everything. So I, I see you guys are, like, just uh, firing out fireballs left and right. Eventually, like you'll get to the point where uh, the fireballs actually become heat seeking um, once you like level it up high enough. And it's pretty cool where it'll like spin around the monsters and like oh, that's sometimes cool. it will actually mess up the trajectory and it'll like fly around and like completely miss the monsters. But most of the time, it's it's pretty cool to see it like circle around the monster and then end up hitting them. That's really cool. Do my little buff here before I go down. I've done more melee, so the real cool thing is the split between... Um, oh, I'm going to die if I stay there. And I, oh, I'm going to die. <laughs> I ran out of stamina. Once you run out of stamina, you really can't run away. You lose a yeah, lot yeah, of you speed. You have to be really careful about that. Kind of almost gives it a, a more of a turn-based mechanic if you're not cautious. You know, you have to let them get their licks in, too. You can't really spam attacks on them. Yeah, using a shield is really important. Uh, and, like, dodge rolling and kind of, like, uh, some of the game has been inspired by Dark Souls. While I wouldn't uh, say we're even close to how as good as the Dark Souls combat is, um, it's still, like, you have to be a little bit more methodical behind your attacks, and you can't just run in and it's swinging your weapon um, and hope that your flailing is going to lead in victory every time. Um, it <laughs> no, it doesn't. I've tried it. <laughs> Evidence yeah. exhibit A, B, C, D, and E. And uh, I think that's actually been a, a real challenge for a lot of people hmm. coming into this game, especially if they've played something like Terraria, is that they're used to just flailing around and winning. Um, and so they come to Korea and they try doing that and they they run into the stamina um, issue where they're like, oh, I don't have unlimited stamina. And That's a level so, seven. Like, you know, they end up just dying repeatedly over and over and over again. Um, and they kind of have to learn like, oh, there's like shield blocking and dodge rolling. Until you said use your shield, I didn't know that I could right click to raise it. So. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then, as you, you can like level up your shield proficiency and be able to like move around with it, and um, it'll get better and better. One of the mechanics that I like about that is that it's actually like you have to use the thing to kind of get better at a lot of a lot of the elements. Yeah, like I didn't, I didn't use magic for a long while in the beginning of this. So, oh, and I'm out of stamina. This is what happens when you run out of stamina, kids. <laughs> <laughs> You run away, I guess. We're gonna be okay. Really slowly. <laughs> Do your cardio. <laughs> How many players does the oh. 
Korea support per game? He said d depending on the server uh, and who's running it, really. Oh, oh, dirt. Yeah. I'm not paying attention. No, it's okay. You're probably like probably busy running a super show or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's, it, it can support a lot. I think the most we've tried is like 20 on uh, Mr. Pound Sign server. Wow. Uh, wow. He, he kind of has the server running always. And oh, that's cool. People have gone on there and stress tested and whatnot, but not like you know, a hundred people or anything. It's not intended to be an MMO. It, it's more just- No, yeah. it's not. Um, although I'm, I am trying to, you know, make it as performant as possible. So you could have, hopefully in the future, like 50 people on a server or something like that. Amazing. Um, we'll see though. So like we'll a, a relatively successful live streamer could have their own like server, their own world kind of. And yeah, that would be awesome. Like I know Minecraft does that a lot. Um, and so yeah, it'd be really cool to support a large number of players. What were uh, what were your inspirations? Like, uh, like through and through for this, like games, uh, so many. Um, standard, I'm sorry, Terraria, standard like cookie like, cutter question. Yeah, Terraria is by far the biggest one. Like it, it's the the foundation is that originally you know I I wanted to make a like a sandbox game that. I uh, had lots of modding support because I saw Terraria and Minecraft hugely successful in large part because of the modding, but they didn't even like plan to have modding in yeah. um, the game. And so I wanted to experiment with that. And it, originally the game was just a hobby project. Um, and then uh, beyond that, um, I, I mentioned earlier, I played lots of uh, JRPGs in the past. Mm -hmm. Like the talent system is inspired by Oh. Uh, pharmacy tactics. Let me pull that up real quick. So, uh, arms is absolutely separate from style. There's a gathering tree, a crafting tree, and an exploration tree. Mm -hmm. That's where you get your ledge grab, you know, just from exploring. Obviously, I haven't leveled up too far yet, so I haven't unlocked a lot of things. Boy, do I have some XP to spend when I do. Or TP, I'm sorry. Yeah, you have to kind of level up some more. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Looks like... Um, the, the gathering is pretty cool. When I first started, I had just the one square, but as I've leveled up, I'm now at four. And I think I got it up to about 40% uh, efficiency. And style is your magic, where you get... I, I haven't used upheaval, I don't think. I should probably put that on a bar. Upheaval. Okay. Well, the next game consortium is asking... He's Well, kind of asking. He's like, we just emailed you. I don't know how, but we have no coverage of Korea except for the Kickstarter. Um, I'm curious, how, how have you been actually like trying to get the word out? Have you been sending out press releases or have you been mostly pretty internal with spreading things? Uh, just internal. Um, I, I'm a game dev, I'm not a PR person. I wish I was, but I'm not. Um, so yeah, I've just been, um, just had my head, you know, uh, in the sand for the last four years working on the game. Uh, um, it, it shows in the amount of content that, that sits here, that's for sure. There's a ton. Thanks. And I'm out of stamina again, yeah. must run. <laughs> Slowly, of course. Yeah, it's the challenge. So one of the challenges with uh, doing like press releases and whatnot is that Korea's uh, progress has been very incremental. It's not like we do one huge update every five or six months or whatever. We're, we've actually been doing um, weekly updates for the past almost year now um, on Steam Early Access. And so, yeah, because of that, it's like, when do you actually like, oh, hey, we released this new update last week that adds in these like this one new feature and fix these, you know, 10 bugs or whatever. It's like. So like, uh, and I'm sure like I could probably figure out some ways to do it and make it so it actually works, but um, yeah, game development takes a lot of time um, and it's just like whenever it comes to PR stuff, I don't have the energy for that, I found. Probably should just like hire someone or something. I, I obviously I'm, I'm not the boss of all things, but I would highly recommend that you do some some more PR because no. the the idea that you put all of this time and energy into this and that there aren't people sitting there anticipating it and just like yes I'm so ready. 
it's it's a shame because right now it's it's a scary place to be for an indie dev in a lot of ways, and we want to be seen. Even oh, what did I take him? Just, you gotta get it out there. So yes, if you don't have the time and energy, you should definitely find somebody to help you with it. Yeah, I I agree for sure. <laughs> um, yeah, one thing that I've actually found kind of challenging is there are people who are excited about it. Um, but a lot of those people already have the game, you know, they're part mm. of the community now. Um, and they, they've satisfied that um, hunger for the game. And so like being in early access, how do you like get people hyped about it um, without like, you know- Play it on a super are, show. Like, get... <laughs> <laughs> That's right, being here. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a it's an interesting new problem um, in this you know with early access is trying to build um, anticipation mm -hmm. while having the game actually available to play. Right. Yeah. No. That is that is. It's, I guess it wouldn't be anticipation. It would just be early adopters in that case. Um, but you'd be building your Kriya army. All your underlings to go. We, and, we like, do have somewhat of an army, so to say, um, where yeah, we have um, a good number of players on uh, Steam Early Access, and um, like you mentioned earlier, I stream development pretty often um, on a daily basis, and so um, a, a number of people are actively um, on the stream, um, and yeah, so it's like. I, I definitely agree. I need to just get out there and do more PR stuff. Um, but I, I, I don't think that we're like completely in the dark. No, I wouldn't say that. Um, you know, anytime your anytime your game is, and I know Steam is like super flooded now. But you know, anytime you're there, at least you know you've got some help. But I, I didn't know about it before the Super Show, so. And, and I would have liked to, that's for sure. I'm happy I know about it now. Um, nice. Yeah. This is the yeah, uh, yeah. the crafting and research recipes. So this is the research station I built. And while we've been over there killing things, we've been gathering resources. And I don't know what I'm going to get out of researching, but I can come over to the research table and check out what this carapace will give me. I got a sturdy shield, which I think is different than the wooden buckler I had before. Maybe even better than my uh, bone shield. And now we have bronze armor that we can craft, which is going to take our defense up to another level. And a weapon we can make with sinew or we'll... some bows, naturally. Iron ore. We learn how to make iron ignit now. Good. Ooh, and finally a new tool to craft, or to, uh, to mine the earth. Um, is there a way to interact with these other items? Like the forge and the... Uh, those are, um, they give you, like, a passive buff by being next to them. Okay. That allows you to craft items related to it, and so if you... Like a lot of um, the weapons will require the forge. Um, and so you'll see next to the crafting button on the craft uh, window, it'll have a little icon with the station that you need um, to be nearby. Okay, okay, that makes sense. So I think like once you get to like broadsword or something like that, once you find some iron, um, that's when you start um, needing those more. Gotcha. I'm, I'm only a cleaver man right now at most. I can't make it yet. <laughs> Someday. You gotta represent the cleavers, right? Absolutely. Big fan. <laughs> so, um, map size. Uh, we tried to explore a little bit, but obviously we died before we got too far. Do you find that people uh, like gravitate around their home for the most part and just try to hold it down, or...? Yeah, well, with how the world is laid out, so the worlds are massive. Someone was ask, actually asking about that. Uh, the worlds are pretty huge, especially if you pick a large world. Um, you're like about two blocks uh, tall, mm -hmm. and or 
or maybe three block i get yeah three blocks tall and about two blocks wide or so um and the world is like eight thousand blocks wide by like 1500 blocks tall um and so yeah huge worlds um and then you can also as i mentioned travel to other uh realms um and so like to answer your question um people do kind of gravitate towards uh their their like starting area but that's partly or mostly because um the world has is split up into regions and moving away from the starting area uh the region the level of the monsters in those regions increase as you yeah as you move away okay um so if you run way far away from your starting region then you'll actually end up running into really high level monsters i have seen that or maybe not even that far away maybe not really high level monsters just too high level for me you have a level cap is 50 and uh, okay. i think you're like at four or something right now yep five. yep i got a ways to go <laughs> uh how about how about the uh enemy levels is are there boss fights or anything like that down the road or yeah, there, there's three bosses in the game right now, um, and we're adding in a fourth one um, for the 1.0 version. And they're pretty, pretty huge bosses. Awesome. And we have like their own realm for each boss, and so it's like kind of its own biome or right. map. And then um, they're kind of more involved. We took inspiration okay. from like, uh, especially the older Zelda games where. Nice. You have to find a weakness in the boss and then exploit that. Awesome. Uh, to actually de be able to defeat them. So it's not just like a, a slugfest or anything like that. That's cool. Um, you have to kind of like watch the boss and analyze them and kind of be um, aware of what's going on to actually defeat them. Neat. Neat. Oh, I'm getting shot from over there. I'll try to take out these things before they spawn at the... Oh, too late. These lanteeds. I'm getting I'm getting destroyed by Blossom here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're they're surrounding me. You definitely need a door there, Karma. Uh, so like when you say exploit boss weaknesses, is maybe like build a platform up to a certain height on them because that's where you have to attack them, or is it more just like about a poison? Uh, it's. It's okay I'm to be vague. Of, yeah, it's okay to be vague. To yeah, don't spoil it for me too don't much. It. But y yeah, it's know. it's neither of those. It's I, li I like being wrong. A certain like um, element that you have to um, observe and then um, oh, figure out like how to damage them. Um, Pretty much what I didn't do with the uh, with these guys over here. What were they called? The cordons. The coordinates. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. The thing I did not do with them. <laughs> Use so magic. I guess it, the bosses are kind of like Achilles, you know, and each one has its own Achilles heel. Awesome. So if you just sit there swinging, hidden, you know, their torso or whatever, you're not going to do anything to them. Um, you have to find that weakness. Um, and that's, that's kind of what it is. Uh, I don't know if that explains it well, but. It sure does. No, absolutely. That's, that's really cool. When you say massive, like you're, you're saying they take up a good portion of the screen? Yeah, they're awesome. like, I think most of the bosses are probably about 10 to 20 times your character size. Nice, nice, excellent. That, that gives me uh, a new reason to work towards these other things in my skill tree, that's for sure. Oh no, Karma, did you die? Uh, oh, that, that was a question. So much death. Death penalty? I don't see you guys healing each other at all. <laughs> I didn't know that I could heal him. Is it by mouse over him or? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay. Who needs teamwork? Bah. <laughs> His initial plan was to come in and just start wrecking the stuff that we worked on to build. And, oh, okay. and, and trolling <laughs> me. <laughs> emulate that yeah. public server a little yeah. bit <laughs> just come on in and start breaking stuff down well that's what he did when he first came he's like you know i was like hey, you know i'm working on this for the stream i would at least like to have something to show <laughs> yeah i tore down a few of his walls he built the door inside of like mud so i couldn't use it good times <laughs> Actually, that's a good question. Jason, how, are you anticipating anything in like your game as far as design goes for like 
preventing trolling from happening on people's servers? Uh, yeah, well, I've planned for that from the start. Uh, the server is authoritative, which means that um, everything that uh, the client tries to do um, has to be um, authorized by the server. Hmm. And so you can't tell the server, hey, I killed this monster. You tell the server, hey, I attacked. And then the server figures out if you actually like killed the monster or whatever. Um, and so with that, you won't be able to do anything like um, spawn bombs across the entire world and have them explode or whatever. Um, and so the server, like, yeah, you can't really do any real trolling um, in multiplayer. Well, you could, like, break down somebody's chests and run away with them, yeah? Yeah, I mean, sure, you can do that. Um, you can be a pest, but, right, right. like, um, it, how can you actually stop that from, like, a design standpoint uh, without just preventing everyone from doing oh, no. it? My heal was too late, Karma. Oh no, it wasn't. You got yeah, health back. Yeah, challenging. Mm, I think I'm still dead though. Hold on, I'm gonna heal you again and see what happens. Can I bring him back from the dead by healing him? Uh, you can, but not with heal. Ah, I need more spell. Um, there's a there's a, a raise spell. Ah, cool. Just sticking band-aids on people doesn't bring them back to life. I, I've never tried it, you know. I've never. <laughs> you have to use a higher power of magic. I see. Uh, yeah, so any any other questions from chat? I'm curious to see, like, I mean, obviously you're going to have your, your basic stuff, but uh, as far as crafting materials go, but there's some things that, like, I didn't expect to see in a game as far as crafting goes, like being able to use the vines, for instance, right off the bat was pretty awesome. Yeah, there's a lot of vines in the game. We've been trying to... A limit. How much <laughs> yeah, they're kind of yeah, overgrowing our little hut here. Um, yeah. I went over to the left and I ended up doing some mountain climbing and I ended up with some other rare things. You stay out there, Karma. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just close the door on him. I had a researcher outfit. So different outfits, definitely a thing here. Have you used your research outfit? I have not. Ah. Oh, I can place it on mannequins. So I need a mannequin first. So we shall craft a mannequin, which I think was sounds in, like an idea. Which was in furniture. I feel like I'm getting subtle, not so subtle hints. <laughs> okay. Well, if you want, I can just tell you. No, no, I'd rather find out. Let's do this. Yeah, there's a mannequin, and it looks like you have the resources for it. Yep. So, yeah, definitely. He's crafted up. I gotta go back up and get my research outfit. Have you tried the chaos crafting? I have not, but I have like some benefit to it, I believe, that I can unlock. Does chaos crafting give you? I don't know. I don't know if um, I... it's like a little mini game. So okay. for anyone, like all the viewers, um, chaos crafting is where you can improve the quality of the item that you're crafting. And so yeah, it's a little mini game. It's it's you play Final Fantasy 14. It's kind of like that where you have um, what we call like steps, and you can perform these different uh, skills, and it takes a certain amount of steps to um, use and. Okay. Um, it will kind of, yeah, so you're basically trying to increase your, the quality of the item before you reach maximum chaos and you can't actually um, increase the quality any further. Hey, it looks like you got the researcher. Nice. Yeah, so will he uh, research things over time then? Uh, actually, it's like instantaneous. If you interact with him, you'll find that he has like a, a translate. Um, like see. option and you can give him so you can find scrolls throughout the world that have special um recipes and then you'll translate them for some money awesome um, and so it's another way to learn um recipes in cool. the game so he's like a, an expansion of the research desk yeah so i imagine there are other costumes as well or other um Look at him over there reading. He's already researching stuff. Outfits. Yeah, other outfits. 
Yeah. Sweet. Yep. Oh, still got hit by that. Jason, out of everything in Korea, what are you most excited about with it? Like, I mean, you've been working on it for so long. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> what, um, what is it that gets you like thrilled and working on it every day and the most exciting parts? That it's almost done. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, well, that's partly. Like sheep took a bullet um, for him. I, I love the, the talent system. I think that yeah. uh, turned out really well. Um, and on top of that, just like the biggest thing is, and I think anyone who like plays the game, um, they'll find that Korea just allows them to like express themselves in w whichever way they want. Mm. And I really like that aspect of it. Um, you know, being a creative person myself, I like, you know, giving people the ability to express themselves as well, um, and be creative. And so like, you can build houses, you can um, build up your character if that's what you like to do. Uh, if you want to go outside of the game, you can then um, actually like mod the game in pretty much any way you can think of. Um, and so yeah, I think that in, like, in general is the biggest thing I'm excited about, is just like, allowing people to be creative and um, now that we're finally getting close to releasing 1.0, I can really start like telling people that hey, it's it's okay to start making mods. We're going to, you know, be supporting mods from now on, and we'll have documentation so you can cool. and tutorials so you can actually make the mods. Oh. I see Chad is <laughs> talking about how Korea is maybe not so different from Terraria or other sandbox games. And this is definitely not anything new. Uh, I think anytime anyone looks at Korea at first, they probably think, oh, this looks like Terraria. Um, and we, we constantly get that. But I think anyone, I, pretty much everyone who's played the game for more than like five seconds can, they, they say that it's such a different experience than Terraria. Um, what do you guys think? I have not gotten into Terraria, so I can't uh, honestly answer oh, that. Oh, really? Yep. Okay. Yep, this is my first delve into a game of this. I actually have never played Minecraft either. So this is the wow, first time I've ever played. Noob, yeah, I am a sandbox noob. <laughs> um, I, I've never Hard really played I a game you. that I've like you know, worked to disassemble and then craft or anything like that. So I've really enjoyed the whole, like, you get to make this world really your, your own. Uh, it's, it's been a real thrill. So I can't speak to its familiarity or its uh, similarities to to Terraria, gotcha. but yeah, that's, that's uh, fine. I can say that for a pixel art game that the monsters are are fresh to me. I love the, I love the spring sheep. And I'm very happy to find out that there are larger things that I cannot fight yet. Is that that just gives me a whole reason to like keep pushing and, and, and try to get further in it. That's exciting. Awesome. Yeah. Overall stellar stellar. Um I feel like I had another question and it's evading me, I'm sorry to say. I should have written them down. Then I'd be that guy looking at the, the notepad. Um, so so as far as future content goes, uh, are, you, are you planning to like get to a certain point and be done with it? Or is there, um, I mean, oh, oh, that's what it was. Uh, the user generated content is the other thing I saw on the site uh, mm -hmm. for future content. Uh, how, how do people go about adding more content to the game? Like just modding. So we have Steam Workshop support. Mm -hmm. And so if you want to create a mod, you can release it on Steam Workshop. And then, you know, that allows you to easily share it with other players. Okay. Um, and that's like the primary way. We're starting to work on some tutorials and documentation on how to do that easily. Sweet. Yeah, and then as far as like, 
future content after 1.0. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to continue working on it. Um, after working on a, the game for four years, I, I am definitely ready to explore some of the other ideas I have uh, for games. Naturally. But at the same time, I know that like, um, depending, it's going to really depend on the reception of Korea mm. um, with 1.0. Like, if it does, you know, decently well, I would like to support the community and, you know, like I was saying, you know, it's uh, like. I want to support that creativity that I've been, uh, like the platform that I'm building for this creativity. And I'd like to, um, you know, do things like uh, feature mods and maybe even p uh, bring sure. some of the mo uh, mods into the main game. Oh, for um, sure. And um, hopefully maybe even hire another developer to like kind of um, take the lead on it um, and allow them to, um, keep pushing new content and new features while I just work on it part-time and, as I said, explore some other ideas. Sweet. Is this your, uh, your first title? Uh, first uh, release title, yes. Cool. Well, it is amazing, and I'm, I'm really impressed with, like, I, I don't know, I've talked to Robot and Kitty about it a thousand and one times. Anytime we start a project, it's got to be small scope. And this scope is huge. <laughs> well, <laughs> once upon a time, it was small. <laughs> it started off, in, I, I told um, Kelly, my wife, does all the artwork for the game. Awesome. So I had to um, convince her to be part of the project. project and she, uh, she was... Um, she was only on board because I told her it was going to take about four to five months to work on um, and finish. So, you know, four years later, she's still there <laughs> along. That is exactly Kate, does, this sound, does this sound familiar? <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. It's just, um, you know, things take a long time. and I, I just want to make sure that it's a great game. And Kelly's been awesome uh, about it. Oh, we got another sinew, so I'm going to go research that real quick. Yay for supportive people. Supportive spouses for the win, I've, yeah? I've done the same, so I, I, I totally understand. Um, It is just about time for this slot to end. So, Jason, if you have any last words, kind of, not that we're going to shoot you after this. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> you say? I'm, I'm gonna scared start... now. <laughs> I'm going to do some giveaways for Kriya in chat while you... Oh, so. sweet. Yeah, so um, Korea is just about done with early access. Uh, I think April 19th is going to be the day that we release it out of 1.0. We're working on an awesome release trailer uh, and we'll be announcing the release date officially here pretty soon, probably within the next few weeks. Um, so yeah, if you want to check it out on Steam, um, you can. and. I also stream uh, development on a daily basis, so you can um, just go to Twitch TV, Siege Games, and follow me there if you are interested to learn more about the game. If I didn't uh, get to answer any questions here, I'd be happy to answer them over there at some point. Um, or if you just have questions about like game dev stuff. And I think that's it. So yeah, thank you so much for having Kriya be part of the show and having me on it. Thank you for making Kriya. I, I have, I have really, really enjoyed it. It's, I mean, obviously I've never played a game like this before, so this has been an awesome experience. Awesome. Well, I'm glad to uh, break you into the sandbox <laughs> games. With many deaths. <laughs> <laughs> awesome having you Jason um, I'm gonna end the call with you and we're gonna switch over um, I'm doing a giveaway for your game right now so thanks again for those generously given keys um, yep. and best right. of luck everybody follows each game you just made a post in chat it. <laughs> thank Watch you again for having me and <laughs> uh, thanks for joining um, everyone who's viewing and I'll see you guys later all right see you Jason